Let's go hard. 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 I did 10 series of Animal Hospital War. That was a show about animals in a hospital. And I got in the way quite a bit. And we did 10 series of Animal Hospital, right? And right from the first series to the last series, we had this dog with us, right? This little dog. And by the time we got to the last series, the dog went mental. Thought he was me. Yeah, grabbing people by the leg and going <laughs> But uh, this, this song I'm going to sing for you was, ins was inspired by Animal Hospital and it's a bit of a weeping uh, If there's any farmers in the audience you might appreciate this more than the others and it's going to be my biggest hit since Two Little Boys. It goes a little like this. This badger off of me. I just can't nurse him anymore. The little blighters got TV. I think he's knocking on the other side. Did you like it? <laughs> but uh, we had some fun earlier in the year doing uh, the, the tour with Fairpoint and uh, we, we played uh, near Liverpool in a place called Runcorn and there's a lot of scouts in the audience, a lot of people from Liverpool in the audience and I thought I'd try and, I'd try and warm the hearts with this song. It's not believing of Liverpool that's grieving me. But believing without my car <laughs> We're looking to get out of the place alive, I tell you And shame on me for taking the mic out of the Scousers I love Scousers, I really do uh, Very talented people uh, Great comedians, Scousers, great musicians Some of both all roll into one Like this guy for instance not going to tell you who it is, you've got to guess. <laughs> day after day, through all the hill, is constantly wondering why he bothered with heaven. He feels so embarrassed. Shouting at the audience, all four of them. Though. 
on this song <laughs> of Woody's. It's about the American Civil War. Hope you like it. Myself out of a coat hanger. <laughs> we'll come back to that later. <laughs> <laughs> no more <boat> changing. <laughs> when you put your own words to somebody else's tune and uh, I don't do it but it's, it's, it's breaking copyright laws so I don't do it but uh, I'm musically dyslexic I put other people's words to other people's tunes I don't think they can touch you for that and uh, I know Bob Dylan was a good friend of George Harrison's and I know George Harrison was a fully paid up member of the George Formby Appreciation Society and there's a lot going on there, man. And uh, it doesn't quite come out right sometimes. Christmas. Yes. The George Farnby grills, you must get one. The shape like a, a ukulele and you open up the lid like that. And you put your egg in the middle there. And you put your sausages here and your tomatoes and your mushrooms here. And in the long bit, that's where the streaky bacon goes in there. <laughs> then you shut the lid, fasten it, set the timer, play a tune, and when it's finished, it pings open and goes, <laughs> the George Farnley Grill. But yeah, you're better off writing your own songs in the end, like James Blunt. I'm going to enjoy it. James Blunt. That's an unfortunate name, really, isn't it? The rhyming slang and everything there. <laughs> you actually, but I can't pronounce it. Really. I just can't pronounce it. Anyway, James Blunt is he's a strange character. He's, he's very posh from a very well to do family. When he talks like that, I was stationed in the Falklands and I saw active service in Kosovo and likewise places. And that's helped me to write meaningful and poignant songs like this one. My life is brilliant. <laughs> My life is good. I saw my angel. And that I saw. Just why I let me end up somewhere. Huh? Just with another man. <laughs> <laughs>
You're better off writing your own songs. I wrote a lot of my own songs over the years. And uh, <coughs> I wrote a lot of songs for Johnny Cash. Johnny never sung any of them, like. You know. <laughs> but had Johnny sung this one, it would have been a global hit all around the world. Well, I never ever met a man more miserable than me. <laughs> My entire existence has been sworn in misery. I'm a melancholy mourner, always deep down in the dumps. Just like Casanova was when he had the mumps. <laughs> well, I ain't apologizing for the mean mood that I'm in. Aspirin, doom, and gloom, and pessimism every place I go. I always wear the scowl upon my face, never a grin. I suppose I must be happy being miserable to see. Well, I once met a man almost as miserable as me. Some say he almost smiled back in 1963. He was going to top himself, so I helped him along. He went and blew his brains out after I sung him a song. So sulking on my weary way I go I'm so weary, never ever cheery So will you let me wallow in TV shows in the late 80s and 90s, but uh, I'm not on television anymore. But I'm over at gardening and decorating and I can't cook. Every <laughs> chance to ask them. But I hope Ken and I and uh, the rest of the evening, the guys gone before us, have been cheering you up tonight because there's so much depression knocking them out. A lot of depression. You can tell how bad it's got when people are turning out of the millions to be cheered up by Leonard Cohen. <laughs> I never saw him, he's probably very, very good. But uh, I saw Brian Furry instead. Lucky me. And Brian, Brian Furry, he, he's got this Dylan thing, he's mad about Dylan. So he's got this album called Dylan Esque and he's going around doing uh, Dylan songs. So I went to see him, Brian Furry, singing his Dylan songs. <laughs> Five guests, one prick, and an audience. <laughs> Jonathan Ross sings Paul Simon, that should be good. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> 
I'm going to try and be brave this afternoon here at Property. And uh, I'm going to be trying to brave, be brave uh, in these politically correct times. Uh, Salman Rushdie uh, sings Cat Stevens. <laughs> Before my last trip, I'm going to attempt, attempt, I'm going to attempt, if possible, I'm going to try and join two seaside towns together. <laughs> Eric Markle <laughs> sings Eric Clacton. Taking half inch off kitchen door. Oh dear. But uh, comedians all over the world are in a state of mourning because the wellspring of comedy has actually dried up. Uh, George W. Bush. George Bush is gone, but he won't be forgotten. He's still out there somewhere, the little bastard. <laughs> and he's out there, the little... And I'll do, I'll do George Bush's face for you. Now, you, you'll love it, because there's cameras here. They'll probably pick me up. But George Bush, he's sort of a weasley little basket, really. With, with very little slits for eyes and a slit for a mouth. And it turns down a bit. And uh, it's, is it going back to the oil business now, but I'll still do it for you right here now. You, you'll love this. I mean, some audiences to throw the shoes at me. It's not accurate. <laughs> Come Americans, after serving two terms in office in the White House, I can honestly say the President of the United States must be the best hobby a man could have. <laughs> but now it's over. I'm going back to the oil business. And I'm going to sing a song about oil. And to help me sing the song, welcome on stage, Donald Rumsfeld. <laughs> Come on, Donald, don't be shy. Donald's had so many death threats lately. We've had to give him a new identity, new name, Ken Nickel. <laughs> He's had plastic surgery. You can see where it's gone wrong in a few places. <laughs> but before we sing the song, I'd like to wish the new president, President Borat Osama, <laughs> Good luck. You're going to need it. With Saddam Hussein gone, we're going to have to concentrate our efforts in capturing Al Qaeda. Won't be easy. Nobody knows what Al looks like. <laughs> All I can say is Al's fate can be summed up in just one word, and that one word is we're going to get him. <laughs> 
And when we do, I'll boil him in oil, cause I'm an oil man. First, the bad news. There has been an assassinatory attempt on the life of ex-Prime Minister Blair, who is now a Middle East envoyer. Doesn't like to get involved, prefers to watch from a distance. And the good news is, the instigators of the assassinatory attempt unsucceeded. <laughs> the bullet, which was fired from a, a Kalashni Had he not carried in his breast pocket his trusty copy of the good book, a personal gift from Her Majesty the Pope. <laughs> and all I can say to the Iraqis is, if together we do not succeed, then we run the risk of failure. <laughs> an oil man don't like failure, but I'm an oil man. Mickey Mouse. <laughs>